Hello, everybody. Welcome to Landscaper Art Quilt or Art Quilt Art Quilt Thursday at our time to quilt. And it is Thursday, October. Is it the 12th? Yes. So it has been a busy week. I took the two little ones. Awesome. I don't know if you can, the two little ones were groomed Tuesday, and then yesterday, little Maisie, the miniature poodle or the toy poodle, she had to have a dental because somebody didn't do a good job of taking care of her teeth the last few months, and it kind of got away from me. And you have to be careful how you do teeth on a dog that you know, they're sore, but she did really good. And now we're back. So let's see who's here. Cause we're going to get really busy. My eyes are threatening to cross on me. And so I want to get this done before they fully cross because it might be a little tricky. Hold on a second. Let me check this out. I'll tell you why I'm doing this rude thing of checking my phone. <laughs> and so I sent a picture. Let me show you. I sent a picture to my kids and said, who is this? And so here it is. I sent this picture to my kids and said, who is this? And my son just wrote back, who's their fa his father, said, whoa, that looks like Donnie. <laughs> and my one daughter who lives up there and sees him off and said, oh, I knew that was Donnie right away. So I, I'm working on it. But I have to tell you, we all have things we enjoy doing when it comes to quilting. For years, I was a traditional quilter. I saw and heard about art quilters and thought, no, I'm a traditional quilter. Well, boy, when I finally realized who my real persuasion was art quilting, it was like a light bulb going off. But I have to tell you, this is not my thing. And I tr I'm trying. I was so glad that our Joni said, Deb, I can only work on it a few minutes and then I have to get up and walk away. And that's how I feel. And I really want to make this quilt for my grandsons and for my, I'm doing it in purples out of the love for my daughter-in-law. I'm doing it for my son and his wife to enjoy their children. But I have to tell you, it's torture for me. So this is going to be um, a Christmas gift for my son and his wife. This is going to be the most dear Christmas gift that I've ever given someone because it's taken months off my life. <laughs> but you know what? I, I want to say this because I don't want anyone to hear me and go, oh, well, I'm never trying that. You never know what your thing is until you try it. It's just like with my kids when they were little and I would put foods on the table. They would look at something and go, oh, I don't like that. And I said, well, you don't know. You haven't tried it. And once you do, you might find your very favorite thing. Like me and asparagus. Oh, my God. I could eat asparagus every night of the week. So you don't know. Don't ever. I can't hide how hard this process is for me. It uses the side of the brain that's not my dominant one. <laughs> and so I can't hide that the process is hard. But, but don't take my word for it. You try it because you might end up saying, this is wonderful. It's like doing a puzzle and I love puzzles. So. You just don't know how something's going to strike you. And as somebody who for years said, I'm not going to do art quilts, thank goodness I tried one because it worked and that I found my calling. So now that I've said that, let's see who's here. 
It's so good to see you, everybody. Mary's here. Bonnie's here. Marsha and Marsha, I've been meaning to write you an email. I try, I've been forgetting to tell you how important you are to this group and how special you are to these live streams. Bonnie is a wonderful cheerleader for us on this our group's IO site. And that's the work that you do on our live streams, Marsha. You are very dear to us. You're very kind. You're, you're funny. You add funny little things. You listen to what people say, when, especially because, you know, I'm so busy trying to remember what I'm supposed to tell you. I don't always have time to keep up with the conversation. So when I go back and check later, you have welcomed everybody that come in. You um, comment on what they comment, which helps me see that later on. So Marsha, please know that we love you and you are so valuable to us. And between Bonnie on the site and you here, we're so lucky. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Yeah, we should we should give our Bonnie, a sh I mean, uh, a Boral Bonnie and Marsha a shout out because they are amazing. So thank you. Okay. Now I'm looking. So Mary's here, my monkey Mary. See this smile? I can't help it. Mary just always makes me smile. And uh, Laura's here. Laura, who I got to see on a textile talks. I didn't watch it yesterday. I don't know. I'm kind of waiting for a different subject to come up, but I finally got burnt out, but I'll be probably back next week. So let's see. Ann is here. Ann, I loved your comment to the group today. And see, you know what? This brings up what I just said. Ann got a set of ink tents um are either dye ink pencils and you can wet them with water or textile medium and the colors bloom and they're perfect for fabric because once they're dry and you iron them they're color fast that's amazing but they have changed Anne's life she is like a kid on Christmas morning and that's how you just never know until you try things. What's going to be that thing, that thing that just makes everything make sense, makes you excited to wake up in the morning? There you go. So I love Anne showing us her excitement. All right, Anne. So Anne is here. Lisa, that's who I was. I saw somebody when I glanced down. I saw Lisa's name. Yay. So, oh, yeah, Laura and Mary can have tea. That's wonderful. <laughs> Don't you wish we could all sit and actually have tea? One thing I love about Kate Jackson from The Last Homely House East of the Sea is, I think, or West of the Sea. But anyway, um, she has a lime green sofa. So maybe what we'll do is we'll have a little um, tea caddy and chocolates. So that's what we'll do. And we could all share with each other. Okay. So now let me see who else is here. She has a magnetic scene guide. Yeah, those, those do help, don't they? Oh, that's great. Ah, oh, so, okay. Let me see. I'm thinking Dolores is here. Oh, this is wonderful. I'm always so afraid to just accidentally skip someone. If I ever do, please know that I'm just a little bit cross-eyed. <laughs> um, Pat is here. I, I'm not really cross-eyed, but I feel it today after concentrate, concentrating the last few hours on this work. Okay. Your cat wants her teeth brushed every day. I've got to start doing it to three dogs. I'm not looking forward to that. But um, I had a good dentist appointment last, last Friday. So that was good. Okay. Um, I'm afraid I'm... Uh, Michelle the Quilter is here. And I love that Pat is here. Maybe Lisa and I can meet her 
this year at, it depends on if she's there, if she's at the Myrtle Beach Quilt Party. We'll see. Okay. Charlene Lawson, Denise. Oh, this is so great. We're seeing a lot of people. Alex Anderson and Ricky Timms are on Textile Talks next Wednesday. Oh, yay. And if any of you aren't sure what Diana Sewing Adventures here, hi. If any of you aren't familiar with Textile Talks, it is put on by a collaboration of Sakwa, which is the Studio Quilter to Quilt Art Association. It's put on by, oh my gosh, now my brain's gone numb, but all of these groups. And in fact, I made a donation to it because each episode costs 54000 to produce and they're all free. So if you type in on your Google search or whatever search engine you use, type in Textile Talks, sign up on the free newsletter and they'll let you know from week to week. It's all, always on Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern time, New York time, and they're free. And then if you miss one, you can go and they put them on YouTube where they stay up so you can get all caught up. But I would love to see Al Alex Anderson and Ricky Timms. Now, Ricky Timms just wrote an email the other day and he's going to Portugal and wants to see um, the family of his husband. So I'm excited about that. And they find they found a good home for their Greyhound mix who didn't get along with their other dogs. And it was, it was dangerous. So looks like they found a good home. So that's all good. But it's so good to see Denise and Charlene and Diana. This is wonderful to see all of you. It's so funny. I was telling Mark, I'm just thinking, I'm not sure, but I was telling him, I'm not sure how much longer I can do two shows a week. It's just a little tiring. And he said, well, which one would you give up? And I'm like, well, my heart is in the art quilt Thursdays, but Thursday night sometimes is a little tough on me. I said, what I should do is just put both shows on Sunday. I don't know. We will see. Charlene says he's in Portugal now. Oh, that's nice. So we'll, we will see. But uh, I want to get more things done. And I'm just ha starting to have a problem trying to juggle it all during the week. But, uh, oh, it's so good to see all of you. And maybe it would help if you do a like and um make sure that, you know, you subscribe. Because I my numbers are kind of low and i thought well it's a lot of work for low numbers not that that matters that much because i don't do anything with it i've never gotten around to signing up or monetizing so this is just it's fun for me but i'll i'm never i'm i am nowhere close to thinking of giving this up because what would i do without you guys i love y'all to bits and i'm very happy that i stay so creatively busy because that's that's quite a joy. That is quite a joy. This was on my dog's collar when she came home. The groomer must have put this on there. Isn't that sweet? And that's a chiffon flower with just fake pearls and rhinestones. That is lovely. It would make a nice pin, wouldn't it? So, okay. Yeah, so if, if anything, if I end up quitting Thursday night, then we'll do... We'll do both art, the normal show and the art quilt on Sunday. But for right now, I'll give you a hint. This is going to, this quilt's going to take me a while. So I'm not giving up Thursdays until for sure I can get this done. So, okay, let me show you. I was talking to Joni earlier. Oh, she sent me some pictures of something she's doing that's so much fun. And you ladies, I know that you like doing stuff with your scrap, odd scrap fabrics. So she has something. We'll show you the picture this weekend. Something that she does, she has been doing lately. And she sent me the woman's YouTube site. And I'm going to share that with you so that maybe you can do it too. Because just looking at her picture, 
Oh boy, I thought of so many things that I could do with this technique. And especially if you have long strips of fabric, like have you ever been cutting and you have, and I'm wondering, can you do it with selvages? So it's going to be fun. And I always like to show you what's the latest and greatest fun thing that you might want to do. And we tend to like what can we do with our scrap fabric. So I needed to cut out some more of my darkest, darkest purple because my little ones, they have a head full of very, I mean, black hair, black, brown, black hair. Okay, let me get all of my stuff laid out. I have been working on this upstairs, so then I have to pack up everything to bring it down here. So... Oh, I tried to pack it neatly enough that I it wouldn't take me too long to set up. But, okay, here we go. Um, and if I sound tired today, don't worry. It Tuesday, I had to get up early to take the dogs to the groomer. Yesterday, I had to get up super early to take Maisie in for her dental. And um, we have the best, I have the best vets here. I, I can't tell you how wonderful they really are. All right. I'm going to reiterate what I told you before about doing the um, portraits. If I had it to do over again, since I like drawing all the pieces on the fusible paper at once, I would start numbering. Numbering on the pattern, number on the pattern piece because one of my hardest things I'm doing is trying to figure out where is the piece that goes here and what makes that extra difficult is once you start putting fabrics on it really covers up it covers up the drawing through the art that you can get through your light box so it's really hard to, I have to keep turning back and forth. The going back and forth is hard for me. My brain doesn't work well that way. But here is my Donnie. And except for his shirt, he is done. And I wanted to tell you a couple of things. Okay. So pay attention. If you're doing this too, pay attention. I mean, some of these pieces. Look at those little tiny pieces. Whoa! <laughs> so, what I did, once I had all of the pieces put on here, what I did is I wanted, it was still missing a little bit. And this is where I am going to use my ink tents. I'm going to use my micron pens. and. And I may even do some outline stitching to really bring this to life, okay? Now, one thing I had to do, I put dark behind each of the eyes, but it was too heavy and it made him look like he had makeup on. So I've had to trim this back a lot, okay? And then I had to kind of redo his mouth just a little. So I'm going to give you a hint what helped me get this to a much better place? One of the things I did, I hope I already said, hi, Michelle the Quilter. And somebody said, Jody's here? Oh, or Jody is here. I, I tell you what, Jody has, I feel like she's held my hand and walked me through this. But what I did is I took a picture of this. And I took a picture with the idea of sending it to my daughters and son to say, can you tell who this is? Because if they can tell who it is, then, okay, I'm doing it right. Now, when I took the picture and then looked at the picture on my phone, it gave me a whole different, a whole different idea of the image. 
And mostly because I work on it flat and you're holding it up. But also when you take a picture, it gives you distance from the artwork. And then certain things become more glaring, like his mouth wasn't quite right. So I have retouched his mouth, going in and taking the excess dark off the eyes so it didn't look like he had eye makeup. So all of those kind of things I was able to see by taking a picture of the work, looking at it. And right away, if I notice something, I stop what I'm doing and I fix that. Then I look at the picture again. And every time I change something, I'll go and take another picture. Look at that again. And because this is the time, once you start sewing everything down, it's really hard to change things. But I, I was trying to get the eyes right. The eyes and the mouth are tricky. And the other, the second thing I did besides taking pictures is this is what the original artwork is going to look like so far as the direction it's facing and what I'm trying to achieve. The one I'm working on is Donnie right here. And so this is Donnie's, this is that artwork. And one of the things is the eyes are a little bit different. So I've been still working on how do I make the eyes just right? One of the things I do is I lay them side by side and I look and I change and I look and I change. I refine it by what the final portrait looks like because oh that's russell i'm sorry this is donnie and this is Donnie. i was showing you russell so here they are and i look at one and then i look at the other and i go bit by bit even if you have to take out a ruler to make sure that you've got the eyes the right distance and all of that but then I took the Micron pen and I've started just to see what it looks like. You can see they have little eyelashes on their bottom eyelid. So see where I started playing with the eyelashes idea? Then I noticed that some of my early white pieces of fabric had dulled down from handling and, duh, and the, just cutting the fabric over it. You might want to be careful of that because you're very light, light. When you're just trimming little bits of dark purple, the dark purple dust falls on the white. So what I did in that case, I don't see one down here. Oh, here's one. You know how I tell you, keep white erasers handy at all times. Only use white erasers or art eraser, art gum erasers. Only use these. Because the racers that come on the pen have dyes in them. So if you use an eraser with dye in it, guess what? It leaves some of that dye on your fabric. But where that I had handled this so much and it, the whites had turned a little grungy, I took my white eraser and I spiffed them back up. So, um, but anyway, so what I was going to, my, my second advice is once you have all the pieces in place, take a look at it beside the original and do little tweaking because sometimes working backwards and all that, you might not be able to see exactly what you're doing. And so just put them side by side, work little bit by little bit. And if you want to start bringing in a micron and being very careful, then you can do that too. So, okay, so that part, but this is why I keep what the original is, the final is going to look like. I keep it handy. Okay. Our time to quilt just became the denim dolls. <laughs> You're such a nut, you silly lady. So I'm going to set this over to the side. One thing I did love when I took the picture of it, I went, oh my God, that is so cool. But look how much better his mouth looks now. So that's the mouth coming together came because I looked at this and I saw where, yes, the teeth are showing in this. 
and I wanted to make that. And then I noticed that he had this sweet little dip down of his lip, lip that I didn't have on there. And so once you start adding those things, then it becomes him. All right, so keep that handy. Now I've started on Mr. Russell. And Mr. Russell is the older of the children. He is four, where Donnie is three. Yes, they were very busy for a couple of years and still are. They're very smart, active boys. And I always told them, look, active is just fine because that means they're healthy and happy. All right. Here also is a copy that I made. And this is where I reverse them. So if I want to, let's say I'm working on something. Let me bring the camera over. If I'm working on something and I'm having a hard time seeing it through the Teflon sheet. Okay, let me bring my pieces over here. If I'm having a problem seeing this, let me get this cord out of the way. For goodness sakes, don't want to cut the cord. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Okay, so if I'm working on this and I'm having a little trouble seeing through this, then what I'll go and do, this is just like the pattern piece so far as reversed and all of that. So I can, if I can't figure out where a pattern piece goes, I can bring this up. Now, this is what it's finally going to be like because remember, the pattern right there. This is reversed, but it's still reversed, reversed. Hi, Melanie. Oh, let me show you, darling. I'm, whoops, I just threw him on the floor. Poor little baby. Now, what I did, since I'm pretty much done with him at this stage, I, here is the Donnie photo and here is my Donnie and I'm still working on this eye it's looking a little too big so I'm still working on that but there there we are now so you have to this is reversed which is important because when you use I'm using steema scene 2 and I draw it right here cut it out then I peel off the bottom paper and I put it on the back side of the fabric. Okay. So I put it on the back side of the fabric and cut it out. When I cut it out, this is the part that goes on the front. So that's why this has to be reversed so that this reads correctly. All right. So it's a weird reverse, reverse makes me crazy. <laughs> So anyway, um, but if I'm having trouble sometimes, then what I'll do is bring up this one and look very closely because honest to goodness, I'm looking at these drawings and I'm like, what in the heck is this? This is hard to, to see. And I had started drawing them with a remember what I said too, don't use a pencil. Go uh, If you do use a pencil, go over it with ink so you can see good because it gets hard to figure out what you're doing. And some of these pieces, I mean, what the heck is, whoops, what the heck is this thing? So I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm still having to work on that, but I'm deciding that it's label, label, label. Draw it clearly so you can see it. And if I had this to do over again, every single piece would have a number so I could locate it. Okay. And I would put that number on the pattern. So, because right here, what I have listed on here is what color number. And, you know, I have my um, color chart here and I put a link on our website to that color chart. It will help you. And um, and once you get doing it a while, you know, it's not quite as hard. 
But this is tricky. Even trying to read. I, I Oh, let me show you what I did. To be able to see it better, I came on the opposite side today and took my Sharpie and I just started redrawing what I could see through the paper. Redrawing and putting in all the little things so that now, as you know, I, I've got older eyes, but now I can see, let me see if I can get you in here. I can see the, here we go. Let me see. Whoops. Where am I? Oh, there we are. But see how much better I can see the shapes now? But what I was telling you earlier by having the things numbered, let me come back out. I can't do the good. Um, if I had everything numbered, because once you start putting the layers on, it's like, where does that go again? And so that helps me then to pull this in or I have to flip this over. So whichever way works best. But just find your own, find your own way to do it. So here is Mr. Russell. And I've been having a tricky time trying to find where the pattern pieces go. Now, next week, I'm going to tell you more. Next week, I have to have this done. Um, oh, I know what I was going to show you. I've been auditioning backgrounds. Now, I'm not going to know what I'm going to use for a background until I get these done and I can lay these on the actual background fabrics. Now, this I just peeled off of my Teflon, doing it very carefully. I put it on a, an unused piece of the steam seam because this has the non-stick paper. So I can put it on here and then lift it off. So I had to move it off the Teflon so I could work on Russell. So here, this now, what I'm going to do, and let me see if I can show this to you. Sometimes I've moved parts. This is a new color I looked at today and thought, Ooh, that might work, but I'm not, I'm never sure until I audition. Because trust me, unless you really have good eyes in your head and you know what it's going to look like. Okay. And since this green has a lot of yellow in it, I thought yellow is the complement to purple. So. This is the first time. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. What do you think? What do you think? I want something that's going to be dramatic, but not overpower the faces. Isn't that cool? I saw that green today and thought, ooh, 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 ooh. Now, here are some a couple others that I had been thinking of, but I don't think, I think this purple is going to be too much purple. Let me see, though. You know what? That's not bad either. Okay. So that's not bad. Now there's this one that has some flesh colors, blue. It, it has a look of purple, but it's not purple. Let's see how this one looks. And you open it up big enough to give yourself a chance to really see. Ah. Uh, I don't think I like this one of, of the three so far. Do you know why? It bothers me how busy it is. At, that bothers me. So now I think I've made the decision that this one's out of the running. All right. Now, there was another one that I wanted to check that is a very light dappled type batik. Now, let's see how this looks. Now, that's pretty good, too. That's pretty good. But, honestly, okay, let me put this back in the pile here. I think this is pretty good. 
But I think I'm loving this. So it's get you think the other that one okay good i'm glad to get your opinion so the i'm and plus this is a jenny buyer so hello <laughs> if i could have my grandson's portraits on jenny buyer fabric that's pretty awesome don't you think what do you think yeah you do lose the face with the light good job body so anyway but you see how this is put together a couple of the pieces, I had to put a little glue to hold it. But this is still sticky, and I'll be able to iron this. In fact, you saw, you saw, see the glint from the fusible? And I'll be able to iron this on the fabric when I'm done. Another thing I love about this fabric is it looks like a very classic. You know what? That's a good question. I don't know. I might have to ask them. And so, all right, now let me find the nonstick paper to put him back on. Here we go. Just lightly tack him down like that so he doesn't slip off. Well, this is really good. So I do like this, and I will keep trying. I, I, you know, I even at some point wondered how this would look because this is a green that has even more yellow in it i don't know that might be too much of a contrast so okay let me pack that back down i don't want to take a chance on losing these because it would make me crazy but ah uh, and there's this green but i think now this is getting too busy Let's see. Because, you know, I've seen some done on busy backgrounds. Let me see. Let me open this up just a touch. But as I see things that I find interesting, this is another Jenny Byer, so that's always a plus. But now I hope y'all can see why I love Jenny Byer so much, because you can do so much with her fabric. Let's see. Hmm, that's pretty good, too. Yes, a gold one would be. Let me go see if I can find the gold fabric real quick. Let me see. Gold fabric. I'm looking. Okay, hold on just one second. I'll be right back. Okay, let's see what these are going to look like. I was thinking, what if I could do some hand-painted fabrics? And I thought to myself, you know, I might want to save my energy for getting these done. And, you know, let the experts make the fabric. But it's, it's something I'll consider. Okay. So here is this gold fabric. Now, I'm thinking, honestly, I think I like the green better. I think the gold, you would think that the gold would do well because of yellow and purple. But I'm thinking it might be oh, a little too much of a change. But this is fun because here is a gold and that, oh yeah, I think that's a little too much too. Okay. Let me see. Here's this one. Now that's not bad. I think because it's muted. Let me see. I like that one. So that's good. 
So this is a, a yellow tan. And it's not too busy. Even though there is a little pattern, it's not too busy. All right. So I'll put that in the just maybe pile. Then I found another Jenny Buyer green when I was over there. So let me check this one out. Now this one has a stronger pattern. So let's see what that does. But these are all things that you're going to want to do when you do portrait quilts. That's kind of pretty, too. It has kind of an old world look. Uh, so I don't know. I think right now it would have to be between this and this. Because you know what? They're a little more moderate. And I actually, I'm thinking this, I'm thinking this is going to be the one. Because it gives a very classic painterly background without being too much. But I have three at least good choices. All right. Now that's going to help determine what I do for their outfits. Because if I did a very classic background... I'm probably not going to want to do these for outfits. You see my point? I think that would be too jarring. If I go a classic background, then I think I'm going to go more of a classic shirt material. So there are lots of choices you have to make. You like the third green gold too? Good, good. I do love that too. Good job. She made a tree skirt for her grandsons with flames and race cars on it. And they both loved it. Oh, that is so cute. So you know what I could probably do? The other fabrics, like the yellow or the cream or something, maybe that could be for their shirts. And, or maybe I can find um, a muted shirting fabric. Miss Jody loves her shirting fabrics. So maybe I could do that. Okay. I've got some bolts I'm going to have to put back together. Oh, what did I do with that baby's face? Oh, I left it on the fabric. Don't take a chance with that baby's face. I worked too hard on that. I can't tell you how many hours is in this. So, okay, there. I'm going to, I'm going to put him right over here where he's nice and safe. Okay. Maybe I could use some purples to be the shirt. So I'll look into all of that. All right. So now you see my problem. And be careful with some of the more you handle the fusibles, the more they want to kind of come apart. That's frustrating. All right. All right. Here we go. So I've got... Now I've got a big piece for the hair. And I'm really, this is my very first time of building it on the Teflon. And, oh, and it, some of you who might not have a light box, I put an order in. And I don't know much about the company. I've still got to do research. But it's a company called TEMU. And I want to make sure that it's not like, slave labor or something like that but they have these light boards like this for eight dollars eight dollars and something to ten dollars right around that range so consider look i i have ordered and i got it and the the thing would look like very quality item but i don't know anything more than that and you know mark's worried that it's, you know, using some kind of slave labor. So I'm just, I'm still going to keep researching the site because I want to be responsible. But, um, okay. So let me get my black, my dark fabrics here. And what I have found too, this is another good hint. When you're working with your fabrics, consider using different 
Wow, that looks blue, but it is not. This is this is as purple as you can get, even though for on my camera right now it looks blue. But use different shades. Use red purples. Use blue purples. Use pinky purples. Um, use the different shades. I find it really makes it pop. If you stay and yeah, that's what that's what he's worried about. That is what he's worried about, um, Laura. And oh gosh, I don't want to think of people being held captive in a factory situation. So I need to keep researching. Okay, so now, but switch between. I've got a pinky purple. I've got a bluey purple. This is a light bluey purple. This is a pinky one. By changing to the different ranges in the purples, you get a brighter, more vibrant look. As I have added, look at this one. Here's a bluey purple. Here's a pinky purple. Um, as I have switched around the different kinds of blue values, it brought it alive more. So consider that I was worried at first because these were so gray. I thought, oh, it's going to dull it. And that's when I thought I might have to use some ink tents pencils. So, okay. So let me show you what I ended up doing last time. Last time I ended up having to... Last time I ended up having to make some new pattern pieces, okay? So here's the reverse. I'm trying to find, I was looking at this little piece right here and wondering what, where does that little piece go? It's so hard. I, I think this is below the chin. So let me try if... A lot of times I find if I find one, I might find a second piece like that. So I have to kind of look and say, well, maybe it's this one. Oh, no, maybe it's that one. I also love what Bonnie, I mean, Bonnie, what jo Jody does when she makes the lighter color go under the darker color. So don't worry about getting the ed that edge that meets that perfect. Do this, only this side with that. And so now I think this is a piece that is on, I thought I knew, one, hmm, maybe not. I thought I knew, I think one of these is supposed to be the chin. I don't know. This is where it gets tricky. And this is where sometimes you just have to take it slow. If you can't, if you're not sure if you have the right piece, I tell you what you do. Draw a new one. It's okay to draw a new one. Okay. Oh, is Bonnie leaving? Bye, sweetheart. Okay. Now, let me see. 5D. There are so many tiny little things. And here's a big five. I, hmm. This is tricky. So next time I will make a point of uh, numbering all of these. And I'm not going to, here's an I, but I'm not going to do any I's yet. Because I want to make sure, here, here's a piece number five. Where does this go? And even when you're looking, it's, this is reversed. So it's tricky. It's very tricky. Well, but oh, let me tell you where I'm going next week. So what I'm going to do with this project next week is talk about how I'm going to stitch it down with invisible thread, but also how am I going to um, quilt it? Am I going to do thread painting? Um, what, you know, what, what exactly am I going to do? Because that's going to be a little tricky, I think. And some of these pieces, I can't tell where they're going. 
So this is why I sit upstairs and I concentrate because it is tricky. This is tricky. So if I had written the number on this, then I would know exactly. I would find the matching numbers and I would know exactly. Now let me try. Whoops, where did that come from? Okay. What I'm going to do, sometimes when I get stuck, I will fold this back and I'll start looking. Where is that piece? And sometimes it's easier for me to just uh, do all the ones than all, you know, do them that way. Like there's this piece right here, and I don't know where this goes. It looks like the collar, but I've already got the piece for the collar. So, but I try to. Try to check the ones first, then go to the twos, then, you know, threes, on and on that way. Because this is quite a confusing puzzle. So you could tell the, well, the pieces I've already done were the easiest for me to find. And I may have to end up just drawing. Some, let's, okay, let's do that. Let's say, okay. Deb, you tried your best. You couldn't find what the next one is. So I've got some good size pieces of, like here is, I can't tell. Where is, I had some good size pieces of the steam machine. So let me see where that is. Hold on one second. And all right, so I will just in. All right, so if worse comes to worse, you can buy more steam machine. All right, so I don't know what to do next. Let me see where I am. I'm right here. Let me two, three. Okay. Let's work on this mouth section. So I need my ink pen. Make sure your ink gets started because sometimes on this really sticky paper, it just doesn't want to. Did I already do part the big part three? Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to do right around here. Now. And I like to do the bigger pieces and then come in and fit the smaller one. So I'm just going to redraw this. And the reason I use pencil, because it's hard to get the ink to draw this correctly. But. Then with the pencil, it's too hard to see. Once you iron it to the fabric, it like disappears. I'm going to draw this whole big design first. Okay. Now, the back of the big design has a lot of two and some threes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out of the three fabric and then start building my twos on top of that. Now the three fabric, the number three fabric is the darkest right here on this part of the face. Because see this is two here. This is three over here. So this three is the darkest right there, which means I can the two over here What's going to be two over here is different, but the three can be cut out right on the line because it's going to go right up against a two. So I'm doing this part with the three. Now this says one, but I'm going to go ahead and cut that shape out along here so that I have a place to put that one. I'll know right where that goes. But if I cut that off, then I'll be confused again. Okay, so here I go. 
And boy, I would give anything if y'all were watching Miss Jody do this because she's so much more talented than I am. But if you haven't done this and you're watching me, I guess it comforts you to know, okay, she has a hard time with this part too. So, okay. So now I'm going to cut this whole piece out of fabric value three. Okay. So now let me do this. Okay. So I'm going to look at my fabrics and pull out a three. Oh, actually, that part's four. Okay. But some of this, I might have numbered some of it wrong. All under here is a four. So what I'm going to do is look for fabric number four. All right. Fabric number four. Now, this is going to be around his mouth. Now, let me show you. So this is number, this is my number six. Whoops, hold on. Let me get the light over here, good. Whoops, I know it's a problem. This, okay. So this, if this is my number six, that to me would be a number five. This would be a good number four. I'm afraid this, I liked that, but I think that's a five. So here could be a four, four. Parts of this could be a four, four. All right. Here is a good four, four. This would be five. This would be five, five. Okay. This would be kind of in the six range. Okay. So also this would be a good four as well. So um that's a this is a six. All right. Okay. Let me see. I'm trying to do I don't know. I don't know whether to do the boys faces out of the same fabrics or choose them slightly different but thank oh nancy lynn is here hi sweetheart okay now this is going to be around his mouth so i'm very tempted to use a pinky purple oh look at this one this one's really good okay hmm i think i'm still this is really, oh, I don't know. I, I really like that. Okay. So now here is the piece. This is going to be the big piece of the mouth. So now I always, I leave the writing on the top. I pull off the paper on the back, making sure that the fusible is against the front. That's the tricky part. Pull that off because when you lay it down, you want the, the part you've drawn on it to show. Okay. So now I'm going to put this on here. You can touch it with an iron if you want to, but you really don't have to. Um, I found with this fusible, you really want it to stick and you're worried it won't. Rub it back and forth. The friction, the friction heat from your hand will really hold it on very well. So I always worry. The reason I hate to put an iron on it when it's at this stage is if I overheat it, all of the fusible will go into the fiber fiber fibers. And then when you try to press it, get it hot later and put it in place, it won't stick because all the fusible has gone into these fibers. And it kind of like breaks down at that point because you can't really use it. Now, this is a little, I left this a little big. So I might have to come back down the bottom. I knew part of the area. Well, let me see. Yeah, I'm going to leave that for right now just because I'm not too sure. Okay, let me look at that piece again. Here it is. Okay, so cut around where I'm going to put a number one, which is my lightest. 
And this is six, my darkest. Okay. But I have been listening to a really good audio book because I can't concentrate. I can't look up to the TV screen to see what's going on. So let me double check. Yep, this is the right direction. Now I have to be able to see where this goes. And I think I've got that. And this will have other pieces put on the top. Don't worry. It's going to look very big right now. But okay. So now that's at the place of the mouth. And then what I'm going to do is, I don't know where that one went. All right. So now I'm going to come back and look here. And three is over here and here. Two is right here. All right. Now I cut out four. Oh, that's right. Because when I turned it over this way, I realized I had written the numbers down wrong. So four is up in this region, right up in here. So now I'm going to draw another one right over this piece of this piece of three. Okay. Now, if you're good at, and you can figure it out and cut the whole, cut each individual piece at, you know, but I found I got a little confused. And so I do it a little bit at a time. Once I get the main thing, I just like having some fabric there. I like having some fabric there because it um, holds the other pieces. So now I'm just going to, let me see how long I can make this go. Right. And now I'm just doing color four and color four is going to go down here and stop right around here. OK, now. Color four. Oh, and color, you know what color? This is color three. OK, wait a minute. Color three. All right, so I'm going to stop it here, stop it here, and stop it right at this point. So I'm going to cut this out really quickly, put it on color three. Now, color three is darker than color two. So this side, all around this whole outside, I cut exactly where. I want the shape to be. You know what I just realized? I'm, it's going to be backwards because I did it this way. Whoops. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to take the paper off the opposite way. Because right now, it would, I've got to have it look like this. Okay, yeah, this is how it has to be. So now I'm going to take off the other side of the paper leaving the fusible on the drawn side. Because see how easy it is to kind of, oops, now what do, what do I do? So I'm going to come in here, and this is a real good three for me. I'm going to put this on here. Then I'm going to come cut that out and put this on. So whatever way works for you, if you can... If you feel like you can handle cutting the whole, well, that no, the three does stop. It's over here, it's down here, and it's here. Now, Jody sometimes says she'll cut out the lightest one in a big piece and then put the darker ones on top. So whatever that works for you. Okay, so this is going to be our last piece that I put on tonight. And this goes right here. No, right here. Okay. Let me see how the shape is again. 
This this one goes down here. Okay. So then what I do, making sure, taking my fingernail to make sure the sticky is on the fabric. Peel off this because I haven't ironed it yet. There's the sticky. And then looking at the placement through the Teflon sheet, you have to be kind of careful. And then you put that in place. Now, I'm not even going to touch the iron on it right now because I want to make sure that I did it correctly. And I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I did. Okay. So that goes on there, but I'm going to wait until I have the other pieces so it lines up correctly. All right. I'm hoping that helps next week. Oh, she bought a Dean Coots audiobook and listened while driving to work and had to quit because it was dark out and it scared you. Oh, oh, that brings up that. Oh, what a good story. I'm so glad you mentioned that because... My favorite artist, my favorite writer was Patricia Cornwell. And back when she was in her prime, I was driving on a trip and I stopped and got a biscuit to eat. And I'm eating it while I'm driving and listening to this audiobook. Her character is a coroner, a medical doctor coroner. And she was talking about, <laughs> she was talking about she needed to do fingerprints off this man, but he had was so rotting that his skin was slipping off. So she slipped his hand skin off like a glove and slipped her own hand inside of it so that she could then do the fingerprints. Now, I talked to a doctor who said, that's kind of far-fetched. You know, it's good for a book. But I was eating the biscuit, listening to that, and I thought, I either have to stop eating this biscuit or stop listening to that book because I'm going to throw up if I don't. So I thought that was cute. All right, so we'll be back next week. And then I'll say, what do we do next? Because we're going to get this all the way through to completion and let's think of some kind of interesting edge treatment we can do once we've quilted it, okay? Be thinking about what kind of quilt patterns do you want in the background? Since these boys are busy and active, maybe an echo quilting? I don't know. But these are all the things to be thinking about while you're doing the hard work of cutting all these tiny pieces out and putting them together. All right. Thank you for today. Yes, it was. It, hers were so good. And she doesn't come out with many now. I think she's kind of semi-retired. But I tell you what, whew, her books would get you. Mary Higgins Clark. I mean, I'm sure y'all can. I love the murder mysteries. Maybe that says something about me. Maybe I'm a little violent. <laughs> All right. I will see you Sunday. Sunday is play day. So we're going to have a pumpkin pillow and uh, let's hope I have the triptych finished so we can work, talk about the binding. Okay. All right, everybody have a good Friday and good Saturday. And I hope to see you on Sunday. Bye-bye everyone. Cheryl is here. Yay, Cheryl. And Nancy Lynn, how wonderful. Thank you everybody. And I'll see you soon. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. This was fun. Y'all are the best.